Good morning, everyone. I am recording this morning's message from home because I am following our governor's travel restrictions. As many of you know, we went out of state for a family vacation and um, we have taken the test, the COVID test, as per the restrictions. We're just still waiting for the results. So it's been almost a week now, but we're praying that they are negative. And um, a few of our kiddos have already gotten up a, a negative test. So you may see them this morning if you don't see Arnold and I but um, so we just decided to record the message from home and so we can get back on track with our summer series so anyway good morning and and welcome to Tri Life so this morning we're, we are going to start right back or jump right back into our summer series the summer road trip where God has great things in store for us. Today is week six and the destination is the beach, which is safety first. But before I begin, I just wanted to give a shout out to Erica. Thank you so much for bringing the word two weeks ago and preaching on week five, Grandma's House. It was a great message and thank you for doing that. And I also wanted to say thank you to Tom and Val for bringing the word last week and it was also a great message and I just I appreciate you guys so much and uh, we can't wait to see you all again so anyway let's pray and um, let's get started so Lord I just thank you for this opportunity that we have for technology to even stream like this and record Lord and and to show it so I just thank you for all of that I thank you for what you have for us this morning Father God I ask that you will be present. Let your Holy Spirit take over, Father God. Prepare our hearts for what you have for us this morning, and let us be transformed and changed more into your image. And we just, we thank you for everyone this morning that is watching, that is there in person. Lord, that you will just touch them. I pray for healing for those who need some healing in their life, Lord. And I pray for those who just need to know you more, Lord, that you would just help them to know you better. So Lord, we just thank you for this morning and we give it all up to you and we pray all this in your son's precious name, Jesus. Amen. All right, so let's just jump right in. Well, actually, let's just pause for a moment. Let's say our memory verse. How many of you know the memory verse already? Come on, raise your hand. It's week six, so I'm hoping that a good bit of you already have it memorized. So our memory verse for this whole eight week series is Psalm 31.5. And if you have the card, the little card that was handed out, you can look on that unless you have it at home. Maybe you have it tucked in your Bible or you can open up to Psalm 31.5. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Psalm 31.5. Into your hands, Lord, I commit my very life. Lord, set me free. You are my faithful God. Psalm 31.5. So hide that memory verse or hide that scripture in your heart. You have a couple more weeks to do so. All right, so who has been to the beach before? Probably almost every single one of you there has been to the beach. Well, we were just at the beach and a few weeks ago, we went to the beach during the hottest time of the day and we all lathered up sunscreen, but I didn't realize until later on that evening that I missed a whole section of my body, which was my back, and it was bright, bright red. And before long, probably the next day, I realized that it was a really bad sunburn and I got blisters all over my back. And I'm thankful that it didn't turn into infection, but it was really severe where I had to um, stay out of the sun for a couple of days and it's still peeling today. So it was, uh, just really bad. So I know that not only is sunscreen essential, but good sunscreen is essential. So what other things are essential when you go to the beach? What are some beach rules? Come on, shout them out. What are some things that you need to know when you go to the beach? One thing that if you have pets, you need to know if the beach is pet friendly, right? Some beaches restrict glass bottles or glass containers. Uh, what else is there? Some beaches don't allow balls, um, ball games, or like volleyball or any kinds of things like that. I know my kids like to take a game called spike ball and not all beaches allow that type of game on the beach. Some beaches don't allow umbrellas. 
So these are all kinds of safety rules for the beach, right? So just like these are safety rules for the beach to keep us well, to keep us safe and to help us to have a lot of fun and to just have the best experience at the beach it is the same as the Ten Commandments for us, right? The Ten Commandments are there for us. God gave them to us so we can live life to the fullest. So when is the last time you really thought about the Ten Commandments though? If you're like me or like most people, maybe you've, um, you read them once a year in your Bible reading plan and you check off that little box where you've read Exodus 20. Or maybe you just think um, that you learn them in Sunday school, right? And so it's just something that you learn, a Bible story, you know, where Moses gets the Ten Commandments from God and brings them down from the mountain on the stone tablets and and it kind of just gets left there in Sunday school. And it's just kind of one of those foundational stories that you just think is taught there as a child. Um, I know sometimes as Christians, even as Christians, we think that the Ten Commandments really don't relate to us today. I hear that a lot from non-Christians and Christians alike, that uh, we the, the Old Testament or the Ten Commandments, we're not bound to them anymore because God sent his son Jesus and when he sent his son the veil was torn in half and we're free from from all of that what are some things that you think about when you think about the Ten Commandments some people equate obedience to salvation that you think that if I do these things then I will be saved but there's no way to do all these things perfectly so why bother I hear that a lot too Maybe you want to pick and choose. Well, these five still apply today and these five don't. Or these eight, I'll keep these. But these two, eh, they're old. I don't really want to use those. But I think the real issue here about the Ten Commandments, if we really stop and think about it, is we're not comfortable following them because we really just want to be comfortable running our own lives. And we just want to do what we want to do. All right, so we're going to read Exodus 20, verses 1 through 17, and this is the part of scripture that you may be very familiar with. We are following the Israelites out of Egypt, and now they are in the wilderness of Sinai. This is where Moses receives the, the Ten Commandments from God. And so let's read Exodus 20, 1 through 17, which most of you are pretty familiar with. So I'm going to read this morning out of my... Um, New King James Version. I think that's what I have this morning. Um, all right, so, all right, Exodus 20. All right, and God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down for them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord, your God, in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and he rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, 
nor his donkey, nor anything that is in your neighbor's house. I do want to jump to 31, 18. And when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. You know, God's view on the Ten Commandments isn't the same as our view on the Ten Commandments. All those things that we just talked about, why we don't ponder them, why we don't study them, why we don't really think about them very much, he views them as the foundation of our Christian living. It is our new way of living. So these these Ten Commandments, this Decalogue, is our blueprint, right, of the Christian life, the Christian walk. And so the first four of these commandments show us how to love God, and the rest of them show us how to love others. We can you imagine, let's just stop for a moment, can you even imagine what life would be like if everybody followed the Ten Commandments? We wouldn't have to lock our front doors. We wouldn't have to lock our car doors. We wouldn't have to get protection, fraud protection. We wouldn't need to spend money on security systems or security weapons. And we probably wouldn't need courts or jails or prisons if everybody was following the Ten Commandments. We know from scripture, Romans 7, 12, that the commandment is holy and righteous and good. And so we need to embrace that. We need to go back to the basics. We need to go back and read these 10 commandments and study them. It is our safety first measure so we can live life to the fullest like God intended it to be. So we don't always like rules, do we? I know that some of you, including myself, have complained about wearing masks. I know that it's taken me a while to find a mask that really fits my face well. I have small ears and so some of the regular ones just fall off and they hurt my ears and so that's just a new rule. I know that everybody's sick of talking about it, but that's just a new one that comes to my mind. If you drive, you, I'm sure, push the speed limits five, ten miles over the speed limit because you think, oh, the cops will give me that grace. I can go 510, maybe you go more, I don't know. Um, but you think I just wanna drive the way I wanna drive. I know I've spoken to many people who wait until they're after 18 to get their license. And when I ask them why, thinking it's because of the finances, because it's really expensive to take driver's ed, they say, no, it's because I don't want anybody telling me how to drive. And so you just, we just, want to buck the, the, the rules or being told what to do a lot. And maybe, maybe you know that you should really only eat one scoop of ice cream. But when that person walks by with a triple scoop, you get a triple scoop too, knowing full well that it's not good for you and that you're going to get sick afterward. And so I think it is just our human nature, right? To push boundaries. I think the the parent-child relationship is a really good example of this. You know, as parents, as guardians, even as grandparents, we have to set boundaries. We have to set rules for our children and our grandchildren early. Sometimes we should be talking about it before we even have children or before we even have the grandkids come over because we know when they push the boundaries, because they will push the rules and they will push the boundaries, that when they push the boundaries and we have nothing set up, things go chaotic very quickly and it's really hard to get control again. But if you have boundaries set up, if you have rules in place and they push the boundaries, it's really easy to gain control and it's really easy to say, here, this is what's established. These are your expectations, right? And so this is what God has for us with the Ten Commandments. He has expectations and you know, I didn't have control over myself when I didn't put sunscreen on or I didn't use good sunscreen or whatever. It got out of control and the consequence was I wasn't able to be out in the sun for a couple of days. So rules aren't bad for us, but why do we equate them as being bad? We say rules equals bad or rules equals no freedom or rules equals I have no control. Rules equal no life. You know, how many times have you heard that from a teenager that, you know, when their parents are giving rules, oh my gosh, I have no life. But it's not. We actually want you to have a better life, a full life, a safe life. 
by having these boundaries and these rules in place, right? So it is because of the rules, it is because of the boundaries that we can have more fun at the beach, right? If everybody, if the beach rule was no glass bottles and people brought their glass bottles and they broke and all these people were on the beach with bare feet, what's gonna happen? There's gonna be lots of cuts, lots of, lots of bad things can happen, right? So we have rules so outcomes can be good, like no sunburns. <laughs> So rules help us play fair too. Think about if we didn't have any rules in any of our sports games, it would be total and utter chaos. So before Moses went up on the mountain in chapter 19, this is what is described. This is 1916. Ooh, forgot my glasses. Okay, so this is how you know that God is trying to get their attention. So 1916 says that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and the sound of a trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled and if you skip down to 18 and the whole mountain quaked gently now these events this event is described in such a way that whoa I better stop and and listen to what is about to happen I better pay attention God wanted their attention here God is saying that I love you so much that I saved you, I freed you, and now I am giving you a new set of rules to live your life. I'm giving you a new way to live your life after I have set you free. So these words and these 10 commandments really help us to understand that they are central to New Testament ethics. And what I mean by this is, let's just look at the New Testament for in different parts of the New Testament. In Mark 10, 17, this is the story of the young rich leader, right? And so this young rich leader is running up to Jesus and saying, Jesus, Jesus, I have a question for you. And Jesus says, sure, go ahead, what's your question? And he says, how do I get eternal life? And Jesus is saying, well, you know, you know, you remember those 10 commandments that, that you know really well? I'm trying to turn to it. He says, you know those, those, those commandments? Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. You know those? And the young ruler says, yeah, I know those. I've been following them my whole life. And he's excited and happy thinking, yes, I got this. I'm on the right track. But then Jesus didn't, he omitted one. Jesus says, but you're missing one. Go back home and sell everything you have. Sell all of your possessions. Now, Jesus here wasn't really setting him up for a path of eternal life. He is just pointing out to the young rich ruler that if you love me as much as you're saying, then you need to love others as well. Because you love me, you will love others. And this is what you do to love others. You need to go and sell everything you have. And the young rich ruler, he wasn't happy anymore, was he? He responded sad. I'm sure he was mad because he loved things. I am sure that he acquired things every day. He was rich and he was young and I'm sure he just loved stuff. And so this command to him was, it was a blow, a low blow. It was hard to hear. He didn't want to hear it. But Jesus, again, was just saying, if you love me, this is what you'll do. And so Jesus is using the Old Testament to explain the Christian way of life. When he wants to quickly summarize how to be a neighbor, he, he goes straight back to the New Testament and he's using New, Testa New Testament, or excuse me, Old Testament verbiage. He's using the 10 commandment verbiage when he's speaking to this young rich ruler. And again in Romans, we see something similar with Paul. So the apostle Paul goes straight to the 10 commandments too when he wants to explain what it means 
to be a Christian, who wants to be obedient to Christ. This is thir Romans 13, 8 and 9. So, owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so you, you see where Paul goes straight to the commandments to, to share with them, this is how you love one another. This is what you do. It's really simple. It's, it's, it's clear. And then again, in 1 Timothy 1, Paul, he needs to describe a way that is so simple, that is so clear, and a way that they understand, the way that they know he just had to get straight to the point. It's kind of like New England. You New Englanders, I guess I'm a New Englander now too, like things just straight to the point. No beating around the bush. Just say it like it is. And that's what Paul was doing. He was just saying it right in a way that they would understand. And he is saying, this is how you as a Christian need to live your life. And he goes straight back to the Ten Commandments. Boom, 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 boom. You love God and you love others. These are the foundational way of Christian living. So Paul and Jesus go straight back to the Old Testament. They don't think it's dated. It's still valuable to their lives then, and they're still valuable to our lives now. There's an author, um, his name is Kevin DeYoung, and he's written many books and many children's books. And this is a quote that I read out of his book, one of his books. When we love, we fulfill the commandments. And when we obey the commandments, we fulfill the law of love. It is because we love God that we want to obey what he's saying in his word, right? There are 613 laws in the Pentateuch. And the Pentateuch is just the first five books of the Bible. 613, all are valuable. All are good because in some way they each teach us something about the love of God and the love of others. But did you know that all 613 of these laws can be summed up in the Ten Commandments? Isn't that amazing? So listen, Jesus, Jesus came to transform and he did transform the commandments but he never intended to abolish them. The law should drive us to our knees. The law should show us our sins. The law should point us to the cross because we need forgiveness. We need Jesus. And we can see in both the Old and the New Testament again that the Ten Commandments are foundational, right? I just, you need to remember that this is not a way to earn your salvation. We do not believe in works to gain our entry into heaven. It's only by faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that you gain access into heaven and eternal life. The psalmist in 1-2 says that his delight is in the law of the Lord. And I'm first I'm thinking like, what? How can you delight in the law? Now, maybe you're thinking, how can I delight in the law? How can I delight in the law of the Lord? It's really easy to delight in God's grace. It's easy to delight in God's goodness and mercy and love. But the law? <laughs> Romans 12 says that the law is good. And so because it is good, because it was given by the Lord, we can delight in it. We need to study and understand the Ten Commandments. We need to teach them to our children and our grandchildren. We, it's, it's one thing to know them, but it's another thing to really apply them and to study them. You know, we're not always holy, are we? <laughs> and we do need forgiveness day after day after day. We're not always holy, but that's what we're called to be. We are God's people and we're set apart to live according to his way. And you know, God could truly care less if we could say the Ten Commandments in order or by memorization. What he does care about is if we love him 
and we're following him and we're applying what his word is instructing us to do. I wanna ask you a question. <laughs> this kind of just came to my mind. How many of you can recite or recount the seven ingredients of the Big Mac? If you're my age or older and you grew up in the 70s, you probably all know this little ditty, I call it, this little song from McDonald's, the seven ingredients of the Big Mac. Uh, let's see if I can do it. Two, two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. You will all know that. So if you know the ingredients of the Big Mac from the 70s, but you don't know the Ten Commandments, I think you need to stop and spend some time in God's word. <laughs> okay, so God really does care about our understanding and our obedience to these instructions that he's given us. So let me ask you, when was the last time you really studied Exodus 20, besides just the once a year in your daily reading plan or your yearly reading plan? When was the last time you really pondered them? You know, once we become adults and we learn these things as children, if you grew up in the church and we just file them away in our head, some, somewhere we just equate that these are just stories that children need to learn. And we have a hard time applying them to our life as adults. Or we forget that we still do need to apply these things to our life. So we need to stop making excuses for not going back to the Old Testament, for not really wanting to study it. We need to stop saying we're not bound to it. No, we're not, but they are part of God's word. And we cannot ignore part of this book that he's given us, his instructions for our life. So here's a few things that I want you to take away, just three things. First, the Ten Commandments allow us to see God's heart and God's character. We need to think about this when we want to dismiss the Ten Commandments. Something that we just learned as a child and it just stays there. Or something that we don't feel applies to us today. Or something that we get hung up on the do's and the don'ts, right? The Decalogue is not, it not only shows us what God wants, but what God is like. His honor, His worth, His majesty. We cannot disdain we cannot disdain the law without disdaining and disrespecting the lawgiver. Number two, the Ten Commandments set us apart as Christians. First Peter 2 9 says that we are a chosen generation, a chosen people. When we accept Christ, we must accept the fact that we are set apart and we are to be different. We are to look different. We are to act different. We are to follow the new way of life that God has set for us. He saved us, he set us free from sin, and now he has a new set of rules for us to follow. We need to follow them because we love God and we want to obey him. And number three, these laws do not take away our freedom. They provide it. The law comes after the gospel. It comes after the deliverance. When God gave the Ten Commandments to the Israelites, they were not in Egypt. They were not slaves at the time. God did not go to them in Egypt and say, here's my laws, follow them. I'm gonna check back in a couple years and see if you're following them. And then if you're doing a good job, I'll set you free. That's not what happened. God loved them so much. He set them free. He saved them. And because of that, he's saying here is a new set of rules, a new way of living your life so you can live it abundantly, so you can have peace and joy and all these things that I have for you. The Israelites were an oppressed people and they cried out to God and God heard their cry and he saved them because he loved them, period not because of anything that they did or could do. God said, when you were saved, you were freed and you were forgiven. And now I wanna show you a new way to live. 
Salvation is not the reward for living in obedience. Salvation is not the reward for living in obedience. Salvation is the reason for obedience. So Jesus does not say, if you obey me, I will love you. He says, I love you no matter what. You mess up, I'm going to forgive you over and over and over. There's no limit on his forgiveness to you. We do what Jesus did. You know, he, he first washed his disciples' feet. And then what did he say? He said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And so we do because Jesus did for us first. I encourage you to just, this coming week, to just spend some time, maybe just take one or two every day and just present them before the Lord. Pray before the Lord. Ask the Lord if there's any areas that he needs to point out to you that you need to ask forgiveness for. Maybe you are using the Lord's name in vain and you know that it's wrong, but you just, you just don't stop. Or maybe, maybe you're just watching a lot of movies or shows that are using the Lord's name in vain. And it's, it kind of makes you feel funny and your spirit is kind of, uh, you don't like it, but you keep watching it because you just, you make up excuses to just keep watching it. But maybe God is just saying, you know what? I just, I want you to honor me by not watching these shows anymore. Or maybe there's some other things that you need to ask forgiveness for. Maybe you're not honoring or respecting your elders or your parents. Even if you're older like me, I don't know what it is. But I'm encouraging you to spend time before the Lord this week with the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, 1 through 17, every day. Read them. Ponder them. Ask the Lord to show you things, to reveal new things to you, because I promise you that He's going to be there if you ask Him. He's going to meet you. So my encouragement to you is just to go back, read Exodus 20, and I know He's going to love on you this week. So thanks guys for listening and um, I love you guys and I miss you. I can't wait to see you. But before you leave today, I, I think there may be popsicles to be handed out. I told you that we'd have popsicles every week after service for the summer. So I hopefully somebody, um, if nobody has done it yet, somebody run down in the freezer and get the popsicles out of the freezer in the kitchen and stand outside of the door and hand out a popsicle to everyone and so you can stay cool. And um, before I dismiss you, let's pray. Let me pray over you. So Lord, I just thank you for everyone that is listening today, everyone that is there today, Father God. I just thank you for their love and their commitment to you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for their hearts, Lord. I thank you that they are open and willing and wanting to learn more about you, no matter what their age is, Father God. I pray that you will speak to their hearts this week as they go back and, and ponder and read Exodus 20. And even if they don't, do that, Lord, what they've heard this morning. I just pray that you will bring back to their mind during the week this week, that you will speak to their hearts, that you will show them how these 10 words, how this Decalogue, how this 10 commandments really apply to their life today and what they need to do to tweak things in their life to honor and respect you, to show you how much that they love you. So I thank you for them. May you bless them, Lord, and, I, and send them out in peace. I thank you, Lord, for this time together. I pray this in your precious son's name, Jesus. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everyone, and I hope to be in the office this week, but we'll let you know. So love you guys. Bye.